Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, today what we're talking about is we're in Hudson, we're along the coast, yep. the west coast of Florida. Um, we're on my property. Um, and today's subject is gonna be, is living on the coast, whether it's the east coast or the west coast or the Carolinas, wherever, Georgia, mm -hmm. is it losing its appeal? Even <laughs> Long Island, you know, because of Sandy. Right, okay. All right, so this is this is not just a Florida thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's a place everywhere. So, is it worth it anymore? Is it worth living on the coast anymore? And, you know, to me, I moved to Florida to live on the coast. I literally moved to Florida to live on the water, so mm -hmm. I can just go in my backyard, lower the boat, and go out because right. I love fishing. Uh huh. But, is it worth it? Because a lot of these people just in this neighborhood, they're out. <laughs> trust yeah. me uh, you know they're like listen we got flooded last year we rebuilt we just got flooded again and then we just got hit again yep. you know and they're saying we are out so that's what we're talking about the, today is it worth living on any coast you know west coast east coast i'm not sure about california what they have there but i have no idea i have no idea either but it's just is it losing its appeal? Do me a favor, consider subscribing to this channel. It's, it's much greatly appreciated. And I and leave some comments. I return all the comments. At least I try to return all the comments. So, Bill, what do you think? Is living in Florida a dying dream? And stay till the end because I'm going to tell you guys who it's not a dying dream for. Well, I think, no, I don't think it's a dying dream. It, okay. I don't. The, the draw to the water and the coast has always been there and it always will be. It's just a matter of can you afford it and can you tolerate certain loss? And how much of that loss can you tolerate in this short period of time or a long period of time? It just depends. We haven't had, recently we've had more storms, but even you know growing up on the coast, I was on the, pretty much on the water and we didn't flood you know, from when I was growing up. So you think the climate is changing and now people are flooding that they well, used to Well, I think everything have? goes through cycles. I think it's just okay. life in general. And, you know, I think the planet goes through cycles and we're not getting scientific and we're not getting political. That's that it's to be honest, is it's kind of irrelevant. I mean, we can just look in general and go, OK, I remember wearing, you know, getting a, we'll just go nine scientific. We're talking 30 years ago. And I remember going out to Coachman Park to watch concerts and stuff in October and it was cold mm -hmm. and now it's not. So, I mean, there's nothing scientific, but it's like, that's just what I had. I got pictures of me in blankets and jackets in October and I don't think I break them out until January now. So, sure. you know what I mean? And yeah, that's true, not been true. like one year. This has been, you know, I haven't had to do that in a, I can't remember the last time. So, um, but is it a dying dream? No, I don't think so. I think people will still always, there's going to be people that who want to live on the coast and want to live on the water, not just close to the coast. Right. So, but basically, you know, in my opinion is the only houses that are going to survive here, a lot of these ranches over here are, investors are coming in, they're going to knock them down. And they, see that house behind us? That's the only houses that are going to be allowed to be built here now. The well, houses on right. stilts. Yeah. So as the, because that's what the code is now, they have to build those because they're on the coast, they have to be on stilts now. And then I, I think just unfortunately, this is what is the catalyst to those things is that we have these major disasters. And then when you can't build, you know, you can't rebuild certain properties, they're going to have to be built up, which is just an additional expense. Well, these stilt houses, because I know pretty much everybody that lives in these stilt houses, pretty much they lost their docks. And this was a bad storm. But literally, we had a huge dock float from an, another part of the canal yeah. over the fences, over the road, and landed on my property. And it's, it's here. It's right next to us. Yeah. You know, that's a bad storm. So they lost their docks. You know, lost everything. But the house itself, the electrical panel, the plumbing, the air conditioning, everything is up high. They basically just rinsed everything off with a hose. They're back in business. They're back in business. Yep. So, yeah, if you're, if you're moving to the coast... You know, and you still have that appeal to to be there mm -hmm. on the coast. You got you have to get a stilt house. I strongly, strongly recommend do not buy a ranch. I'm warning you, do not buy a ranch. And and a lot of people are going to say, well, this ranch never got flooded. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what I hear it all I the hear time. It all the time. 
<laughs> it never got flooded. It never got flooded, you know, especially if they don't have flood insurance, they're just going to clean it up real quick. Well, my house didn't get flooded. Yeah, my neighbors had four feet, but I was okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it'll get flooded. If it say it didn't get flooded, eventually will get flooded and stuff. So buy a stealth house. The other thing, too, is why it's losing its appeal is people just can't afford it. The stilt houses. Right. I mean, they're, they're obviously they're more expensive because there's more to it. And property values are going up despite what it, I mean, I know that it's, it's, it's an issue right now, but those are expensive houses and they're not getting less expensive on the water because it's a premium over here. So let, let's talk about a, a house that's a neighborhood near here. Okay. okay. Stilt house, 18 feet up in the air, just mm -hmm. like the one across there for sale, $700,000. It's 1,500 square feet, or okay. 1,550. 700,000. On now, the water. On the water, on the canal. Okay. The house next door is a ranch sitting on the ground, mm -hmm. you know, and a little, maybe a couple hundred square feet bigger. That house, 300,000. Obviously, it probably got flooded or something. So, but you see, you see the price difference, same square footage, but the stilts almost double the price. Right, and that stilts also probably quite a few years newer, newer versus something that was built in so 50s, 60s, 70s along the coast. Cause that's what you, that's what a lot of these ranches are. So, yeah, so when do you think they started doing requiring stilts, 90s? I'm not sure, I honestly, I don't know. Okay. I, I don't, I can't answer that question. So I don't want to just spit out something that's so far fetched. But people, it's losing its appeal because, right. you know, it's, it's losing its appeal because, you know, it's just freaking expensive. Well, it's, you know, waterfront property has been getting further and further out of reach for, for lack of a better word, for just the median, right? The average median household income. And it's becoming with insurance, taxes, because you have to think about all that stuff, additional maintenance and upkeep, you know, because you're on the salt water, salt water's harsh on everything. And it's becoming more advantageous to people who have a lot of extra disposable income that can afford to have a home on the water. Yeah, but this is what I'm afraid is going to happen. A lot of these ranches are going to be fixed up. Yep. And then as time goes on, people are going to forget about the storm. Of course. Life is going to get back to normal. Yeah. The grass is going to be green again. You yep. know, the garbage is all going to be picked up. And then out of staters are going to come here from the Northeast or California with a lot of money in their pockets. And they're going to be like, Oh, look at this neighborhood. It's beautiful. Look at this house. It's been remodeled. But pretty much every house can be remodeled. But anyways, it was remodeled. Then they're like, oh, it's only $400,000. And the, the, the other one that's higher is $900,000. But hey, let's buy the $400,000 one. Look, it's beautiful. You know, square footage has a swim pool, everything. Then they're going to buy it. Then there's going to be a hurricane. And, the, and then they're going to get flooded. That's what's going to happen, I think. I think People are going to forget about the storm and they're not going to realize, am, am I being negative? Yes. <laughs> okay. Here's why. Here's okay, why. Tell me why. Here's tell, why. Tell me because why I'm being negative. you're making it sound like every single storm that passes us here in Florida floods every house. No, I'm not saying and that. And I don't want people to get that impression. I don't want you to get that impression. I think within a few years, we've had these houses, at least in this area, and I can pick other areas part around There's plenty Florida of areas to pick. Yeah. That have got flooded a couple of times within a three year span. So is it a gamble? Yes. I think if you buy a ranch, even in where I am right now, Hudson, Florida, you are gambling that, you know, when hurricane season comes up, you're going to be nervous and saying, Oh my God, you know, should I have a U-Haul on standby to get my stuff out of here? <laughs> right. Because in the interim, because I think people do get desensitized to it after a while. So like the next storm, then everybody's on high alert and ready to evacuate and do all this because what their mind, their mind rolls back to this last storm that we had and so on and so forth. And then it gets a little, then people kind of get a little bit more complacent and then we get a whammy, right? So I just don't want people to think that every single storm because this massive no, cloud I, over I, the I'm, state I'm, of Florida, I'm not, I'm not saying you know, a comes massive along. cloud, but I'm just saying, you know, those, the, this video is about is it losing its appeal. The, yeah. the, losing its appeal is that when hurricane season starts, you're going to have to start thinking about hurricanes. Yes. Yeah. And be prepared to bug out. 
because yeah. because no matter what, if you get if we get a hurricane warning here, not a watch, but a warning, you're going to have to start you weave with a warning and a watch. You're going to have to prepare to leave because you live on the water. So that's one of the things you just have to kind of be used to. You should be if we have if you're told to evacuate no matter what, because there's a potential and you're in that cone of, you know, we call it the cone of uncertainty. We don't know exactly where it's going to go in that cone. But if we're there and the authorities tell you that it's time to evacuate zone A, well, you better be evacuating zone A, you know, and that's just part of having to live here. So you need to be prepared to do that and be accepting of that too, because that's stressful. So he, he, here's the deal. So, you know, somebody from New York moved here. I'm not going to say their names or anything because they watched the videos, but they were like, <laughs> Hey, you know, I said, hey, you got this hurricane. You know, you, you have a few houses right on the water. You mm -hmm. worry about it. It's like, no. Everybody makes a big deal out of it. It was like, you know, we're just going to go and not worried about it. You know, like. I got it. Yeah. You know, and then these hurricanes hit. And he's like, my wife wants out. Dang. Right. We're, we're, like, we're out. We're going back inland. Yeah. They're moving to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the Wesley Chapel. Right, right. You know, but it's just. And you don't have to do that either. You know, this this storm, you're going to hear it on the news, you know, and they talk about it. It's unprecedented. Well, they're still, and this, that, they're and the still talking about the no-name storm that happened. When did the no-name storm happen that there wasn't 92? even a name? 92? No. Um, that was in the late 90s. Okay. In that the was late, in the late 90s, okay, early 2000s. I, I didn't live here, but you were here, yep. you know, and then this place was devastating. They're saying this was worse than that. Yeah, the no-name storm was pretty bad. Like I, That was the first time I remember having to sling sandbags at the firehouse. Wow. Like that was like right when I was, I don't even think I was full time yet. Um, Cause that was in 1997. So it was before 1997 cause I wasn't full time. And I remember slinging sandbags at the firehouse. Okay. Here's another thing that's going to lose its appeal of people living on. It's, you know, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be realistic. Now, you're going to buy a house, you're going to buy a still house, okay? And now you're pushing, you know, anywhere between 700000 in some areas, a right. million dollars, oh, you know? Oh, yeah, and up. And up, you know? So it's just, it is what it is. Your property taxes, okay, <laughs> are going to be... I know where you're going to go. Your property taxes are going to be yeah. twelve to 14000 for a basic stilled house. Like, I'm not going to live here. I'm going to live where I live, my main house, but this house over here would be a place to, you know, go for the weekends to get away and you know, go fishing and stuff. But my taxes are still going to be, you know, between my taxes and my insurance, mm -hmm. it's going to be over a thousand dollars a month. Right. And as you know, cause I want to, I want to retire. My, my big thing is like, I've always said on the videos and you keep cringing when I say I this. Know, and I'm like, Oh, here it comes. If you pay too much money for taxes and insurance, it's like you are renting. Okay. Say you, you go, you go, bear you know no no insurance at all okay now you're just paying taxes i met so many people on these houses and they're not really great their houses it's just they're just high you know and they're just the view they're mm -hmm. paying 16 17 thousand dollars a year that's enough for a lot of people to turn off like you always say oh just live 10 minutes away from the water right like you can there's a big difference between on the coast and 10 minutes away like there's not that big of a difference to get here, you know? Right. And there's a huge difference in property values. Huge difference. Huge difference in property values. So the same house that'll be here that you're paying 16,000, you move inland 10, 15 minutes, you might be paying four? Yeah, Five? The, uh, the equivalent the, house. On the median equivalent, you're probably in the six range. All right, it's six thousand. Yeah, about bucks. six. I'm just trying to think of the last couple of sales. But I just don't believe that if you're paying sixteen to say even some people, I know one person who's paying over twenty. It's just like, do you really own it? You're renting it. You are. You're renting it from the county, from the township, wherever you are. You know, it's just it's just ridiculous. I think that's a big drawback of. For certain people, yeah, and other people just blink at that and go, "It's only twenty grand." Not my cup of tea, but, you know, I'm just saying right, I know that there's people okay, that so, think that way. So that's a good leg into what I was talking about, who could afford right. to live here. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know who's going to be able to live on, on the water? The very wealthy. The very wealthy. I'm not talking about the middle class. I'm talking about the very wealthy. Very wealthy. Yeah. Because 
and, and, and you know, when I'm saying like somebody that's making, you know, $150,000, $200,000 a year, you're not going to be able to afford to live on the water. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, no. Even condos are getting crazy expensive. Or they've gotten crazy expensive. We'll see what happens now. With well, you know, that, that's a good thing you're talking about. Condos, okay? Because a lot of condos are right on the water that mm -hmm. you can look in the condos. And some of the condos, even Clearwater Beach, the, the, the price is dropping like a freaking rock. Yeah, they're the it's you know a lot of those because they can't get them sold. But what's happening with a lot of the condos is a they were overinflated in the first place. Um, but what happened is all of these milestone reports are coming back because they've been due now. Well, explain to them what and a milestone it, yeah, report. Yeah, we're getting is. there. I'm like, so what? And what's happened is it's caused the association dues to go through the roof to cover repairs and make sure their budget is balanced. That's what the milestone report is. They want to make sure that the structures aren't having deferred maintenance. You because know, of the collapse. Right. You know, um, balconies, cracks in the stucco and, you know, things where the water is getting into the rebar. It's, it, that's causing structural issues. And that's what the milestone reports are for. So those are expensive in and of itself. Plus, if there's been any deferred maintenance that they have to have done in a certain period of time, it all has to be funded. That's why these condos so, are going through the roof. Well, the prices are dropping. But, right, but the association condo association dues are going through the roof, which is forcing the, the prices, prices to down. go down. So let me ask you a question. One of the reasons that the prices are going down. Okay, so let's say a year from now, a lot of condo places are in trouble, especially the older ones, and the prices are rock bottom. Do you think it's a good time to buy then? Because now the milestone reports will be paid for. Right. You know, and the maintenance would be completed. So now, do you think that the HOA fees will go down? So it depends on if they did it more of a temporary assessment, a one-time assessment, you know, or like an assessment over a, a specific period of years. Um, or the other concern that I would have is I'd want to make sure that things that are happening in uh, like the Miami area, where some of the condos just can't quite dig themselves out of that hole yet, and then investors are coming in, buying out the owners, and then they're knocking it down and making a super luxury condo. Yeah, that's good for I the would next be, 30 years. Yeah, and I would be very, very, that would be one of those things where if it's kind of like, eh, I just wouldn't want to be displaced. It would just be something that's in the back of my mind yeah, that I I'd want to look at the, like, that's why these, it's a good thing. These milestone reports aren't bad in a sense of you're really getting a good idea of what the condo is offering. Right. So, you know, the real stance of where the condo is, there's no really hidden anything. So let's go back to the original question mm -hmm. of this video is the appeal of living on the water, you know, going away. Here's my opinion. The appeal of living on the water for the people that have been through these two hurricanes is going away. Yeah, I can tell you that they, yes. they're going to sell. They're going to move inland. They're going to make sure that, you know, like I always said, the most important thing on a purchase is elevation. Wherever you live in Florida, Get, go, get to the highest point, and that's where you want to buy and build or do stilts. But the desire, the appeal is going to still be there for newcomers coming in. So, like, the people that came in from the Northeast, California, that came in and bought along the coast, and they're like, oh, this is great, this is great, and then they got hammered with these two hurricanes. Yeah, they're going to be like, okay, I'm done, I'm out of here. And then there'll be a fresh group of people that are naive because... As time goes on, people are not going to be talking about these hurricanes mm -hmm. anymore. And then they're going to move in. And some of them are going to buy the ranches, even though I keep telling everybody <laughs> that everybody watches this, these videos. Don't buy a ranch on the water. You know, they're going to go in and they're going to buy the ranches. Then they're going to get hit eventually. I won't say every year or every storm because I know how you are. Well, because it's the truth. It's the truth. But eventually, I don't know how long it would be, but eventually they will get flooded. You know, and then they'll sell, and then a new group of people come in. Yeah, it could be it's one a, year, it could be 30 years, you don't yeah, know. Yeah, but it's a vicious, vicious cycle. So the appeal for the people that have been through these storms is gone. The appeal for new people coming in that are naive to live on the water and don't understand all the facts about living on the water is still there. What's your opinion? Yeah, I think there's going to be the, still to the same, there's going to be that group of people that are done, because they just don't want to have to deal with it again. Uh, there's going to be a group that maybe wanted to move to the water that rethinks some things, you know, and I understand that because even me growing up here, I don't know that if my house got flooded twice year, you know, last year and this year that I would want to roll through that again. Like that's just a lot of upheaval and a lot of stress. 
you know, that I just don't want to have. And I think that there's always, always, always going to be that appeal of people that want to move to the coast, whether it's on a stilt house or a ranch house, and they just don't care. Yeah, like me. I'm going to be on a stilt house, so I don't people, care. They just, it's what But I'm not going to enclose like. underneath. I'm going to leave it open so the water can flow through because I, I expect four or five feet right. of water. Well, and even if you close, you have to use breakaway walls. Yeah, but you know? me, I don't want to even put anything down there. I don't want yeah, to have just, nothing. Just clean yeah. it all out. Anyways, that's today's video. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. It takes a second, just click that button below. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. And comment below, share, give it a thumbs up. And I do return the comments and we'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.